Yeah. Right. Yeah, but Thanos, but on just just the one world. Just, just, just the, the one. one. Just, just the one. Just the one world. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nerd On, the podcast you didn't need but deserve. Where all levels of nerd are welcome. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Hi. Today, it's not who we are underneath, but what we do that defines us. Oh, dang. That's right. We've been teasing this for a bit. And on our social medias that we've been celebrating, celebrating. We are our, accelerating. C- accelerating our celebration. While for, eating celery. <laughs> celeries for a two-year anniversary of this show with the cinematic phenomenon and it all starts here with Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> dun, dun, I mean, dun, real quick. Real, I was uh, thinking real, that too. Almost. Real quick. I mean, I will say that the Dark Knight trilogy goes into a lot of what we're known for. Yeah. I mean, let's say... Uh, 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 well, wait, wait for that episode. It's in the Don't cream your jeans. <laughs> no, yes. I'm just talking uh, about the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. The podcast you didn't need, but you deserve. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's mm. birthed out of that ideology. Um, oh my God. That, oh. And wow. Welcome to the show, Caitlin. <laughs> it's in the copy for the next one. So you'll see that yeah. because this is a three-part episode yes, uh, celebration yeah. thing. Today, or the first one, we're we doing set ourself Batman nice. Begins. Shut up, Ollie. Let me explain the thing. The next one's going to be Dark Knight, and then after that, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. So if you're listening to this one, then listen to the next one, and then the next one after that. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to this in the wrong order, then I don't know what you're doing. Uh, wow. wow. You do you, boo-boo. You do you, boo-boo. You just find you that podcast, podcast thing. And Ollie has more to explain now. I was just going to mention, uh, we set ourselves like a weird... Un- like we hard precedent to meet. Yeah. <laughs> We're like a trilogy of episodes and what better to do a trilogy of episodes on than a trilogy of movies. So this is yeah. a, it's going to be a quite a day. Trilogy of Batman. Trilogy of Batman. So many Batmans. And last year we did uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yep. So if you missed out on that, definitely head back over and take a peek at that. Next mm-hmm. year's yeah. The Hobbit. Next year's a <laughs> Cool. I have a feeling that that we'll would be over that. Corey's dead body. <laughs> we have we have a year to decide. I can talk about it. <laughs> Anywho. So let's get into it. Uh, your host today, I'm Tom. Ollie. Caitlin. Corey. And I am Josh. And this episode is brought to you in part by... The Nerd on Nation. The Nerd on Nation. You got it. Yeah. Patreon. Wow. I know. It's been one of those... <laughs> years. Yay. Anyway, it's been one of those years. If you are new to what Patreon is, essentially it is a exclusive membership service in which you can support your favorite creators like Corey, Nerd On. Like me. And for as little as a dollar to five dollars a month, you can get fun stuff like a Discord server that is popping all the time. Every day. Uh, it's us host. It's the host of our other shows, The Capeless Crusaders. Which yeah. is new, yeah. Um, trope yeah, time, uh, trope all time. Peeps. All of our patrons. It's a it's a really fun time, and you can talk from gardening to comic books. It's a it's awesome. There's also exclusive access to bonus episodes, early access to episodes, all sorts of stuff coming out all the time. This episode is also brought to you in part by our friends over at Comicsology. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Mm, the so. internet's number one source for comics. Yes. <laughs> wow. You, <laughs> you nailed that, dude. Wow. Way to go. You're natural. You can check it out, nerdon.io backslash comicsology, and do know that a little bit of every purchase goes towards us to uh, keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of lights. And the cameras and the microphones. If you want to read comics. And maybe get new cameras. Yeah. If you Mm. want to read comic books that like are what, you know, Christopher Nolan based off all the theory films that we're going to talk about, then comicsology is never one spot to go because then you can read the book and the way that the programmers set it up because then they push you to panel to panel instead of being confused and not knowing where to go. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. So Batman Begins. <laughs> here we are. Are we here? Yeah, we're, we're here. here. We out here? We made we it. Here. As it? Tom says. Oh shit, we out here. And we you know what? You know what also here is at? Huh? Here is at where we find out that the film is one completed project. Oh no. Mm. And oh, so it it's a finished work. Yeah. So at the end of this episode, we get to guess that grub. Oh man. Uh so everyone uh listening for the first time. Uh, thank you for joining us on our anniversary. But also, Guess That Grump is a segment of our show where we guess, guess who that. is <laughs> guess do it, who's going to have the lowest number out of one out of five because we're going to rate it one out of five. And whoever's the lowest out of us will be the Grump of the Week. Uh. Yeah. Uh, I guess the Grump for the next hour until we get to the next episode. Uh, yeah. Right. But yeah. Uh, We'll yeah. average him out at the end of the third episode and tell you who's the Grump of the Week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You mean I'll average him out. Ooh. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Wow. Uh, we encourage everyone at home to play along. Send us who you think uh, would have been the Grump. Also, what your numbers would have been. One through five. What do you thought about the film? Uh, since I always explain, I will let Caitlin choose who she thinks would be the Grump. Oh. Um, oh, man. 
Because I let her do that. Mm-hmm. Right? Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I'm going to say Josh. Ooh. Mm. I know it's a poor choice. All mm. choices are poor here. I think all wow. choices, <laughs> choices are poor. It's going to be a tough one. I don't know about you. My choices come from privilege. Oh. Wow. Okay. So they're never just poor. Like, just like Wayne. My choices were molded by it. Uh, <laughs> Not yet, buddy. Audience. Not yet. I don't care. No, no. I'm going to say Caitlin. All right. Yeah. 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 Ali? I'm going to go with Tom. <gasps> <gasps> what a bold choice. Wow. <laughs> what a bold choice. Uh, I'm going to go Corey. Really? No. Woof. Do we got a little a little Mexican standoff here? You got to spice it and up I here. Say that uh, in the Ollie's the only one who hasn't been voted for, so I know. I'm going to vote Ollie. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> there and, you go. Uh, what do you know? Patrons for Batman Begins uh, voted for me. Okay. Voted for you. So you yep. technically have so, the most. Yep, I have the, the most. patrons from the Nerd on Nation the have their vote in. You can join as well if you're not part of the nation. Yeah. Uh, just as a So everyone has one vote except Caitlin has two from the Josh patrons. and patrons. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That's fair. So, so she'll go last. <clears throat> last. Yeah. Uh, so now that we've got that out of the way, I guess we move on to the logical step that Corey loves to go to. I think this yes. is Corey's favorite part of the show. Uh, initial reactions, aka first impressions. Yes. If you're across mm-hmm. the pond. It is. AKA yep. spoilers for what we just did. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go. No, I don't want to go first. Let someone else go first. I talked a lot. Caitlin, you just saw it for the first time. I did, no, this was right? not my first no. time. No, it was the, other the, ones. the last the one. Last this one. is her last, first time was knowing first that. What was your first initial reaction the first time you've seen this? Um, hold, hold on, real quick. To be fair, when you first like, I watched Batman Beyond, and I was like, you mean Begins? And then you're like, that one. That's how you sound. That's how you sound like to me. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> also, that's, did you only fair. see it once in theaters and then that was it? Or had you like, um, seen it more recently? I saw Returns in theaters. I don't remember when I saw Begins. I think I saw Begins in parts and pieces just on TV. Wait, Returns? Returns, 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 Returns is, movie? is two movies ago before no. Returns is uh, Dark Knight. Is a whole yeah, nother. I yeah. actually wrote down Returns as I my know. middle Batman one. Returns is Rises. Tim Burton's can, 1990. Can I give you? Can I give you an analogy? <laughs> one 1990. Well, Returns is the one that I, of course. Wow, can all of an, my Batman are an, squished together. An right analogy now. is kind of yeah. like I saw Spider Man Two with Tobey Maguire, and then I saw Far From Home. That's what you just said. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm aware. <laughs> uh, which is so funny. I grew up watching the um, the old. The no, no, no. no. Oh, I grew oh. up watching the Adam old West? series oh. with Adam West. Yeah. Yeah. I used to watch that all. Oh, yeah. I used to watch that all the time. So I've seen a lot of Batman, but I just cannot remember the names of any That's of the only movies. Metal, so you, saw, you saw, the last time you saw Dark Knight was in theaters. Or you saw it recently. Uh, in theaters. In theaters. Okay. Yeah, okay. It was a, Batman it was a long, Begins. Long time ago. Yeah. Batman Begins, I only saw in parts and pieces on TV. So which, this is your first run through, run through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably, what I meant. You probably saw yeah. So what's your, what's your initial probably. reaction having USA, just sat through it for the first time? USA it re-ran that. was, I like the movie. Okay. Hey! <laughs> so we're all surprised. Um, it, it was a lot of information, almost an overwhelming amount of information, but mm. not in a bad way. I never felt just like... You might have said you might have felt stimulated. N- no. <laughs> Mentally. <laughs> to a degree, but it was it was almost happening too fast to like process it. But um, it was all there and I didn't miss anything. So I liked it. Was it was told to you in a good cadence to where almost it wasn't like overbearing. It was a good movie. Almost like Whoa. it was a good movie. So, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Next in oh, action. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just, I'm just trying to keep you on their toes here. Um, I. Ollie. Um, <laughs> Ollie. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Batman Begins. I remember seeing it in the theater and I was super, super hyped because um, I love Batman. And uh, hashtag unpopular opinion. I did like the Schumacher films, even if they were crap. Um, but I love them so much. Um, and so when this came out, I was really, really interested because you could tell from its first kind of ad campaigns that it was going to be a different telling of Batman. Uh-huh. And so it was, it was exciting to see something like that, uh, come to the screen. And I walked out like, whoa, that was, that was really cool. Um, I think I had a little bit, we'll get into this later, but I had used to be qualms. Mm. That, that aren't qualms anymore because these movies are actually they're they're on my top list mm-hmm. these are movies that I where uh, they should be Bonnie and I probably watch them a couple of times a year and we watch them on Blu-ray because Ollie won't let me watch anything else nope. but Blu-ray I already, I already he keeps hitting these yeah, yeah. Um, but no I, I really really dug this movie a lot dug funny like a <laughs> lot <laughs> that's what I thought yeah I don't know why uh, Ollie um, for me 
uh, pretty much along the same lines as kind of a lot of the sentiment that you put forth, Joss. Josh. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Josh <laughs> Whedon didn't get to touch this Batman. Hey, hey. Josh makes movies better. He does. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. Sorry. That's heard uh, it here. Uh, sick burn. Uh, sick burn, dog. <clears throat> yeah. But um, going into it, I, it's for the same reasons, because it looked like what would Batman look and act like if he was in our world here? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and a lot of people say ground, like it, it was so grounded, it's so gritty. It's like, yeah, it's grounded, not just in like a visual style, not in a like premise way, but also just in the sense of the characters and their interactions and seeing characters go through normal things and, you know, yeah. what happens when you're gone for seven years, you're declared dead. I you think, know, uh, I mean, kind of on top of that is like my initial reaction is that, and since then I've been more cultured mm -hmm. and I've read more Batman comics, but going into this, I had no idea, like. Yeah. And so when I was getting this story, it was like, I have no idea if that was a part yeah. of Mm -hmm. uh, or, that, that, or but, is that a liberty? Uh, or yeah. is that a liberty that they took and, and we're like, we're going to tell this story. Right. And it's not like the, it's not, you know, it, it does have some fantastical elements to it, but, um, you know, it, it, it's a world that respects the world. It's, it, it establishes a world that's respectable, that has rules, that follows its rules. And yeah, yeah. Um, you can get a really good sense for it. And, and thus, like, the dramatic tension is pretty high and is impact, impactful and all that good stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So it was just a super positive experience right from the first viewing. And um, I loved it, of course. So oh, it was it. fun. Uh, Tom, I'll go next. I. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't even. <laughs> I knew, he, knew, he already knew. We already had a little. <laughs> well. Uh, with our eyes. Uh, uh I didn't actually see this in theaters. I was in summer school at the time, mm. so I was in trouble. I wasn't allowed to go out, <clears throat> but I did see it as soon as it came out on DVD at the time. Mm -hmm. Debating. Uh, but it wasn't a very large TV, so I feel like that kind of made up You're for rough. the quality. Uh, but I was glued to that fucking screen from start to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, I had known Christian Bale from Newsies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So this is a very different take. Uh, yeah, and the machinist right before it. The like, machinist I didn't see till later. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see that until after Batman. I actually. saw this uh, after the machinist. Machinist was one of those DVDs that I bought because I yeah. loved it so much, and it was so crazy to see this next. This like, was my first I was, Bale movie because I was I was 16 at the time this came out. Okay. Uh, and so someone had told me about him gaining weight after this mm -hmm. for Batman. They were like, "Yeah, he gained all this weight after the machinist." And I was like, "What's the machinist?" And they were like, "Oh my God, you were in for a treat." Yeah. Uh, 117 so I, pounds. I saw this. Mm -hmm. at, no, he went to 109. Okay. Oh. But and then he went to 220. He went no. to 220. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. I, but from start to finish, I was good at the screen. Uh, I'm also a big Killian Murphy fan. So seeing him as Dr. Crane, a scarecrow, uh, was really, really exciting for me. Um, yeah, it's just like you said, it's it's grounded, which is really nice. And this is kind of the first movie to like, let's kind of ground superheroes a little bit and let's see some of it in reality with with a little bit of fantastical spin on it mm -hmm. uh the um toby Maguire spider-mans were kind of a step in that direction but this really took it to a whole nother level uh took yeah. it to a really respectable uh cinematography place that kind of like burton had beautiful movies but yeah. they were a little more fantastical right oh, yeah. yeah right so uh this is a really really beautiful mix uh really well written the characters are treated with a lot of respect um and it's kind of the Batman I've always wanted to see. Mm -hmm. uh, like, don't get me wrong, I love Keaton, and I think he is fantastic. But yeah. Bale brings some sort of energy to the character that is what I had envisioned when it's I read, a, read the page. It's an urgency, nice. yeah. You know, and, and and you feel that drive right from the very beginning of the movie, and it's what carries that character through yeah. the first couple acts, like pretty aggressively. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you pick up on that right away, and he does a great job. And you also so. pick up on like his struggle, which is like mm -hmm. being Batman. Like yeah. is and it was so, it was so human. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and being uh, being a kid at the time that the first prequel came out, I was pretty excited to see Qui Gon Jinn in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was like, oh, yeah. <gasps> I love him. Legit, I, uh, this probably exists on the internet, but that iceberg fight, wherever they have, they should totally replace those with lightsabers. The iceberg, oh, I see. Man. Yeah. I would be oh, surprised dude. if nobody has. Yeah, they should that. have that. I'm sure it's, it's online. Done someone, someone commented somewhere. Uh, is nice. that all you done? Oh uh, yeah, I was just oh. gonna say I I loved it. Uh, I was not a big fan of this movie. When Can I ask you a really quick question for you specifically? Were you, I was 14. Uh, were you, you were 14. Were you as into comics? Like as you are now, uh, like, did you have previous knowledge? I hadn't read that many. Okay. At this point, at this point, yeah. 2005. Was I 14? 1991? Yeah. Yeah. I, was 14. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I could do math. Uh, yeah. You, I guess were, you were 13. So it was June. Oh yeah. I was 13. Yeah. So, but the thing June. is, I remember being really juvenile. And I remember like being that kid that would like. What changed? Go, 
Um, I'm just nothing. I got taller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, yep. But no. Uh, yeah, I remember being that kid in the theater that would like fucking talk during the movie and shit. Oh, you fucking that was you. So like, no, it's so funny because like, there's kill a part in the movie <clears throat> where I don't kill me. Uh, where he's like, get the blue fat from across the thing. And then me and the guy I went to go watch the movie with, at the same time, we pulled out the flowers, like, we said, wrong flower. Like, at the same time, we laughed our fucking asses off. But this wasn't our first time watching it either, but it's like, we ruined the experience for other people. Anyways, um, <sighs> but no, to, to answer your question, I don't think I was really that much into it at this point, uh, into comic books, because like, I had a couple from my dad, and like, I never liked reading. Uh, and I always felt reading was an assignment and I always just watched everything. And so yeah. my only understanding was like watching the animated series or watching prequel or watching like Tim Burton movies or Joel right. Schumacher movies. Um, and then it wasn't until like I actually went to high school proper, like when I was actually 14, then I was like actually reading the comic books. Okay. And like this comic book, this movie really derives from uh, Frank Miller's year one, um, which is great. It's mm -hmm. a good story between uh, Gordon and Bruce when they both arrive in Gotham. It's a great time. animated version of that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, ben Kingsley plays Batman. And really Ryan from the OC is is in it as well. Yeah, that's Batman. Yeah. Ben Kingsley. Yeah. Or ben, ben McKenzie. I was like, Ben Kingsley. Yeah, ben uh, uh, but uh, yeah, this, so this movie, um, I thought it was really weird. I thought it was, I, I, I so did not like it. I don't it get it. Because I didn't like that the, the Batmobile wasn't slick. I didn't oh, like okay. that his right. grapple gun wasn't the little hook shot thingy. It was an actual gun. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that, like, oh, people use real guns and people like aren't like fantastic. And like I grew up on the shoulder movie. Ice to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like it's very Kiss different from Rose. Oh, the villain that's, wasn't that's weird me. Uh, yeah. so like watching this is so like jarring as a kid, like yeah. as a 13 year old, like who grew up on the fantastical side. And like again, the animated series was based off Tim Burton. And so seeing Clayface, seeing Joker, seeing all of them act a certain way, yeah. the Bruce Tim way versus this. The, the noir dramatic. Yeah, I never had a really appreciation for it until like maybe sophomore year of high school. Okay. And I watched it like once a week. And then oh. I just like would watch it and watch it. And like I remember like I had an old school TV that would auto caption. <laughs> and then I would just remember just seeing ominous theme, somber yes. theme yes. playing, right? And then I was like, I fucking love this movie. And the crazy thing, I remember I would watch the beginning of the film like for like a whole month and that was it. I wouldn't get past it. And what? then I would, for another month, I would watch like the next half of the film and wouldn't get past it. And then I'd watch the end half and wouldn't get past I've it. I've done stuff like that. Yeah. And it was like really weird. I was just in this weird phase where I was just like photo capturing what was happening to it. I did so, that with Fight Club a little bit. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. something because like there's there's parts that you want to continue re-watching and rinsing and yeah. just like appreciate better and better. It's smaller like, details and smaller it's details. It's kind of like when you're in, the, in this car, you're listening to music, you're like, hold on, I didn't appreciate that one part right. enough. Yeah. You're listening to music. You listen yeah. to the same song yeah. over and I over and over with, again. I do that with comedy a lot. Like, yeah. Always Sunny, they'll do a joke and I go, oh, wait, hold on. That yeah. was fucking amazing. I'm going to rewind that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there was a lot of this that I loved. And uh, after a while, it wasn't until like actually after watching Dark Knight that I was like, oh shit, this is, oh, this is what it is. And I was like, let me watch this shit one more time. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. So I, I absolutely love this movie. I think, uh, you know, in so my- It grew on you, essentially. Yeah. In my humble opinion, as I got older and I started uh, ingesting more media and more comic background, but also, goddamn this paper, uh, but also like watching more films and like realizing like there's different film styles and different ways to still tell stories. Like this to me is actually, I think, the perfect like superhero origin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's because of the Nolan storytelling, which we'll talk about exactly. a little bit later. But yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah, there you go. Um, TLDR. Yeah. I like the movie. Oh, like uh, so <laughs> that will bring us to our uh, meats and potatoes. Yeah. Uh, potatoes. Brief synopsis and our production. And the brief yeah. synopsis will be given to you by the illustrious Ollie <laughs> What? Hi. <laughs> I have a last name somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, so uh, Batman Begins is set 30 years in the past. I'm just kidding. Jesus. Um, so no, uh, the story sort of opens with uh, the two little kids kind of uh, um, playing around in, in the backyard of the Wayne Manor. It happens to be little uh, Bruce Wayne and little Rachel Dawes, childhood friends. Um, Bruce falls uh, through or he's, he's, he's hiding behind like a little rock, but he doesn't know he's standing on top of a well, which uh, has like wooden planks kind of crappily blocking it. So he falls through because it breaks. Someone and just went, no one will stand on this. No one will stand on this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and wood Someone and, always and, does. Yeah, erosion doesn't happen. And then, nope. and then, uh, and there's moss yes, and there's grass. And there's uh, so he falls through. Uh, his dad comes and rescues him, picks him up. Why do we follow Bruce so we can learn to pick ourselves up? 
Uh, he's then, also attacked by bats. He's attacked by bats, which is the key uh, the key thing while he's down there. He looks into the dark cave or whatever, gets it by bats. So he kind of is like traumatized by bats. Uh, then he goes out. Uh, his parents uh, make the great decision to take him to a play that has a bunch of flying bats around mm-hmm. as the as the uh, <laughs> subject in matter. The, in the opera. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's called. Is that the play? Deflator Mouse. Deflator Mouse. Yeah. You're right. Probably. Sounds right. But that's the, that's uh, a song. Anyway. I just know the guy that's singing or, opera is Mustafelis. I've heard that, yeah. Hmm. Uh, and then uh, he has to leave because he's getting, you know, PTSD or whatever. <laughs> uh, so then they go out the back. Um, little and the opera infamous goes event way. happens. The infamous event Joe happens. Chill. We uh, Joe Chill comes up, gets the, uh, gets the, you know, tries to uh, rob him. Things go bad. Uh, and then uh, Bruce is left without parents and with just his butler and his estate and the board is going to keep uh, the company running until he grows 18 and can get access to the... Luckily, he meets bat. a nice cop. Meets a cool cop uh, that assures him that everything is going to be okay, puts his dad's coat over his shoulders. Uh, <laughs> happens to be, uh, probably at that point, Patrolman Gordon. Yeah, Officer um, Gordon. Officer Gordon, there you go. Uh, and then um, we come back, we fast forward a little bit right at that point. After he graduated from uh, Princeton. Yep. He graduates from Princeton. Um, Wayne and, Manners. Oh no, he mausoleum. doesn't graduate from Princeton. I think he just like comes he back. Leaves. It's like a semester break or something. Yeah. Wayne Manners and Mausoleum. Um, Joe Chill's getting going to trial. Getting out of trial. So he, uh, he uh, Rachel Dawes is 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 an assistant DA or something like that. So she's part of the case, and they're talking about it, and uh, they reu- they uh, have a reunion, right? And then yeah, they a they reunion. go a little bit. You know, she meets them. And they go to the trial together. Um, and he's basically being, um, he's being left, let out on parole early for participating in, you know, like, like a plea a, bargain. A plea bargain, exactly, for helping like another case to get solved or whatever. A big case. To help bring down Falcone or maybe or something. Um, <laughs> or or something. That's exactly what it is. I think, I think that that's, is exactly I think that's what, what it is. I think he's going to go talk to Falcone or Marconi? Falcone. 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 Yeah. He's going to testify. Testify against. And then. And, in, 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 you know, in exchange. Uh, however, uh, Falcone has him killed, I guess. Um, before Bruce Wayne has an opportunity to do so because he was waiting for this opportunity to gain vengeance. He brought a revolver with him and he was going to um, kill him outside of the um, yep. outside of the court as he walked out. Um, but Falcone's uh, woman did it instead. Hitman. Uh, Hitman did it instead. Rachel um, wasn't stoked about it. Rachel wasn't happy. Uh, he, confide, uh, he confided in her about what his plans were and that he's not a good person. Uh, she, she slaps him. She slaps him. <laughs> a couple times. Uh, yeah. They, they talk about how the uh, city is going, you know, City's worse than ever. Crime rates going crazy. Uh, they go to Joe Chill. Uh, no, they, they go to uh, Falcone's bar. There you go. He's like he talks talks him there. He's like, don't don't come in here with your anger and and blah blah blah. You're, and you're small. You're small. You're small. Um, small like you, you can't ever fight. You, you can't ever do any of these things because you you're not thinking about the repercussions to your loved ones, et cetera, et cetera. S M O L. He gets kicked out. Um, he decides like screw life and he decides to disappear. So he disappears uh, for seven years. And in the seven years, he uh, goes around, looks like mostly uh, an Asian area uh, in all of Asia. Explore the criminal mind. Explore the criminal mind. He, he tries to infiltrate in. He experiences desperation, experiences having to steal uh, to not starve. Um, he experiences and, the thrill of success. Yeah, ends and, up in a prison. And ends up in a prison Tibetan because they prison. get caught yeah. on a heist uh, in Tibet where he decides to practice on his prison mates. Um, he then... Uh, Ducard lets him out of the prison, or uh, yeah, or recruits whatever. Him. Yeah. Recruits him to the League of Shadows. He tells him takes this take this uh, little flower and take to the summit of this mountain, and there you'll find your answers you seek. He goes up there. It's the League of Shadows headquarters. Um, they train training um, ensues. under ninjutsu. Training and, ensues. Training ensues. <laughs> uh, face your fears, etc. Uh, he he learns at the very end that uh, the whole plan with the League of Shadows is to use him as the leader. A uh, perfect place to strike at the heart of criminality in Gotham City and to burn, basically raise uh, Gotham City to the ground is their, is their plan. But that's my home. Uh, no, Ken Watanabe, you will not do that. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, he uh, fights him um, and then uh, basically uh, kind of destroys that whole facility uh, in explosions because they keep gunpowder in very convenient places. And then yeah. he explodes out, saves Ducard's life, uh, and then leaves back to Gotham. Alfred picks him up. Uh, he's like, you can use the rolls when you like. And uh, and then he brings him back from the dead. Uh, and then I'm trying to fast forward a little more through it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then basically he Batman decides ensues. to become Batman. Batman ensues. Uh, he goes and, and gets Falcone, someone that they couldn't, uh, you know, bring down for a long yeah. time. Uh, basically he starts to like impact the city. Um, but then uh, Falcone wants to do a uh, Fal- insanity plea. Right. Fal- uh, he wants to do a sanity plea uh, just so he can get out of having to go to jail. 
Uh, but Crane uh, has other plans because uh, Crane is actually working for Ra's al Ghul, who is, uh, turns du- out, is Ducard. Yep. And uh, is alive and has come back, is on his Was way to Gotham. Uh, and their plan is to disperse a uh, weaponized hallucinogen into the air. Of to the kind blue of, flower. Of the same yeah. blue flower that he used in her training. But a uh, higher potency. Higher it's potency. Uh, so that basically he wants to destroy Gotham in mass panic. Yep. Um, and uh, so that is uh, not a good idea uh, to Batman. Uh, <laughs> and- <laughs> So they, they uh, release so, all the prisoners, so, essentially. Yeah. Uh, so he releases the prisoners. From Arkham. Um, from Arkham. So the police raise the bridges. So now they're That's stuck right. on That's so, right. So now everybody's stuck at the Neuros. Uh, That's the not good. Batman doesn't like that. No. The Batman doesn't like that one. <laughs> not one bit. Not one Batman bit. In about and, it. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then they bring in the uh, microwave emitter. And, but they uh, stole from Wayne Enterprises. Batman yeah, was sad about Wayne it. Enterprises and Batman was like sad about that. He didn't like that. Mm-hmm. That was his microwave. <laughs> that was my microwave, you bastards. <laughs> I'm gonna make all this mac and cheese. (laughs) I'm gonna make my mac and cheese, my bats Uh, and cheese. So then uh, they realize that uh, his plan is to actually uh, send a train with the macro emitter straight through to Wayne Tower, which is the central hub for all the utilities. It's gonna cause a chain uh, reaction. Chain reaction. The whole city is gonna go up in in, uh, everyone's gonna go crazy. Poison vapor and crazy vapor. Yeah, because the League of Shadows basically want to reset the status quo of Gotham. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who Uh, released the plague. Constantinople. They they did Rome, Rome, London stuff. Um, they bring into they restore balance in the world basically, and so it's Gotham's turn apparently. Uh, so then, uh, essentially, he fights Ducard in the in the train. Uh, doesn't kill him. Doesn't kill him, but doesn't, but have, doesn't, to, save but him doesn't have to save him either. He um, likes that. Yeah, he likes then, not saving. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, and then he dies, and then um, Gordon's like uh, escalation. You know, this guy double homicide taste for the theatrics. Uh, he leaves a calling card. Yeah, calls himself Joker, and Rachel says that she can't be with him because Rachel. the true face that he has right. is Batman, and, and then uh, she can't be with him as long as Gotham needs a Batman. Yeah, and then, and then yeah. Gordon forgets to thank Batman, and Batman's like, "I never, I don't ever have to." Lit, it's my moment. <laughs> oh, I guess if, is that, it if Batman doesn't like that, I don't know. Credits, oh <laughs> credits. Well, actually, credits then roll. title, then title, title. yeah, title, <laughs> title, title and credits. That was, that was only like thirty seconds. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, you did great. Actually. That's hold what on, happens when you let I me go. I feel like it was good. It was like you bench pressing for the first time of your life. <laughs> <laughs> that was really Aww. good. That was really yeah. good. Yeah, you did a good job. Yeah. You did a good job. And now for the production. and now we're gonna do the production by me. Let's see how you um, do. It's distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures. If I suck at this, it's only because Tom wrote it wrong. Um, the director. Wow. <laughs> no responsibility for your actions. Not at all. Before this role, he was all. like, I broke my back writing these. Like, <laughs> I, know. I put all my he heart and soul so into these production lists. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, and she it's just all tosses fault. him under the bus. It's Tom's fault if it's The bad. one director. <laughs> the one director is Christopher Nolan, who is also known for uh, Memento, Insomnia, Inception, and Dunkirk. Uh, and then the producers are Emma Tal. Emma Thomas. See, I'm, it's, uh, it's that's on me. That's on you. That's on me. Because <laughs> that's written perfectly. <laughs> it's true. Actually, it's a little too far away. I'm going to pick it up. Emma Dude, Thomas, who is Christopher Nolan's wife. Uh, Christopher Nolan's wife. Uh, She's known all for. Of Chris Nolan films. There you go. All of them. Uh, Charles Roven, who did 12 Monkeys, Scooby-Doo, Wonder Woman. Uh, Larry Franco, who did The Thing, Escape from New York, Batman Returns, and yes. Jurassic Park 3. Not that The Thing. <laughs> no, it not is that, The Is it? It is. That, 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 thank that The God. Thing. Um, That's why I put not, it down the 20th, not the 2011 The Thing? No. Oh, good. And the, one. on the writing side, it's based on characters created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Mm-hmm. Um, David S. Goyer, who did Constantine, the Constantine TV show, Dark City, Blade, comic book writer, Christopher Nolan. So, yeah, this one. So the story <laughs> is writer. stories by David S. Goyer, screenplays by David S. Goyer and Christopher Nolan. Oh, Christopher, oh, oh. No, Christopher Nolan is Christopher Nolan. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Okay, and the cast is Christian Bale, who is known from American Psycho, Newsies, The Machinist, and Reign of Fire. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Caine, who is known from Alfie, Miss Congeniality, Interstellar, The Cider House Rules. Uh, Gary Oldman, uh, True Romance, Fifth Element, Dracula, and Darkest Hour. Katie Holmes from Dawson's Creek, Disturbing mm-hmm. Behavior, and Ray Donovan. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson's. From, <laughs> Liam Neeson's. <laughs> Liam Neeson knees, son. Uh, Love Actually, Star Wars, Taken, and Schindler's List. Ken Watanabe from The Last Samurai, Inception, Godzilla, and Detective Pikachu. Mm-hmm. Is, uh, mm-hmm. It's Watanabe. Watanabe. Not I Tanabe. messed that up. Not B. I want, I want, not Watanabe. Watanabe. Yeah. I didn't mess it up that time. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Freeman from Glory, Shawshank Redemption, and Sussevenin. Sussevenin. Uh, Cillian Killian. Murphy. Killian. Mess yeah, that up. I'm okay. bad you at got it. words. It's, it's Irish. It is. Uh, 28 Days Later, Peaky Blinders, and Sunshine. Uh, Tom Wilkinson from Grand Budapest. Grand Budapest Hotel, Michael Clayton, The Full Monty, and yes. Rutger Hauer. 
Rutger Howard. Howard. Yeah, you got it. From R. Blade R. Runner, Sin City, R. R. and Hobo with a Shotgun. Yeah. Well, that's in peace. Is there still more? Is there? <laughs> Release date. Release date wanna... is June 15th, 2005. Runtime is 140 minutes. Uh, budget was 150 million. Oh, shit. Sorry. The gross is 384 million. The, well, that's a lot of dollars. Uh, <laughs> the Rotten Tomato score is 84% uh, from the critics and 94% audience. Oh, Thank you, you sir. No, you did great. Mm-hmm. You did uh, like at least uh, one percent better than Ali. Also, Aww. King Joffrey. King Joffrey. <laughs> King oh Joffrey. yes, <laughs> the little kid. Is and I have my Jeffrey. theory. My theory. This star My fan theory. <laughs> There's a lot of things that all of Game of Thrones it. happens in his head once he gets oh, right. the. Oh, once he gets the, the panic. <laughs> Like, are you gonna be okay? I'm gonna be king. <laughs> <laughs> Put his head okay. on spike. Um, oh no! But yeah, there's a Marry lot. Of, my cousins. There, Go in, ahead. In all the Nolan Batman movies, there's a bunch of cameos from a bunch of actors. Yeah. I can't like so John Nolan. Right. One specifically is the board member Fredericks, who is Christopher Nolan and Jonathan Nolan's. Uncle. He's in all of them. He's he was in their first feature movie, Following, which is, I just love that they still kind of try to include the family in there. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, there's a woman from the bl- uh, from their first movie called uh, Following, which is her name is the blonde in the movie, and she is uh, she's in the dining the the hotel scene with them. She's the blonde woman there, and it's like, oh wow, they still you know they hold on to yeah. their like their roots. Mm-hmm. Which I really like. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so that gets us to like the actual uh, fruits and vegetables of our of our, of our meal. <laughs> Do fruits you and vegetables. favorite the sides, favorite parts, favorite parts. Um, also, I don't need protection. Yeah. Uh, going back to your uh, 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 initial reaction, yeah. the first movie I saw Christian Bale on was Rain of Fire. Mm. That's and so I was like, oh, he kills that. fucking dragons. Yeah. I'm down to see him fucking be Batman. Yeah. But also, I saw American Psycho a little bit after that, and I was like, oh, this guy. He, he My great. next Christian Bale film was uh, Machinist and then Equilibrium. <gasps> oh, Equilibrium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, yes. That's been a long time since I've seen that. Favorite parts for Batman Begins? Well, that, uh, was, that was one of them. Okay. I don't need protection. Oh. Oh. Not for you. For them. Uh, I Protection. think most things that had to do with Fox. Lucius. Uh, Lucius Who we Fox. didn't talk about at all in our <laughs> brief synopsis. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. He was Lucius amazing. Lucius Fox gave him all the Batman toys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all, who gives him all the Batman toys? All of his lines, like, didn't you get the memo? And yeah. in well, any there's, snide there's remark good, from him. There's good secular theme and resonance right. that they, they have so the many of those. So like um, every line is always you're gonna hear it again. Yeah. And it's great because it's it's theming. When yeah. they when they went public with the company, he's like, Oh yeah, we're going public. We're just you know, securing the future of the company. And he's yeah. like, Oh it's yeah, you went bit, public, so I bought everything. It's all a bit <laughs> technical. Just but, securing the future yeah. of my company. Yeah. Um what are you don't be afraid, Bruce? What are, are we fall? Are we oh, fall? Okay, yeah, so so my absolute favorite. Or part <laughs> is actually first time uh, Bruce Wayne and Rachel Dawes meet after he comes back. Oh, uh, yeah. It's at the hotel. The hotel. It's after he swims with the little models. Swimming. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, he's, and he's like, and he's hey. all wet and he's just clinging with her, saying, like, it's all not who this I am. is I am more. And uh, I just love it because, like, the, the, the theme, the Bruce Wayne childhood theme plays. Mm-hmm. And then it is this kind of like, the last time they spoke, they left on really terrible terms. And this is the first time, like, they're at different places of their lives. And, like, he still has this sensitive spot for her, but he can't seem to get out of the shell that he's built for himself. Mm. Um, and then also it has the fucking best line in the goddamn movie. It's not who we are underneath, but what we do that defines us. Mm. And uh, to me, like, that's, ugh. Like, there's we a- have more hotels for you to buy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, like, it's so it's so good because he's like, I am more. Where's we about? And then he's like, fucking shit. Shut up. <laughs> Not right now. My fucking MO's gone. And like, I don't know. I, I actually really love Katie Holmes in this. Um, I know like the next film she gets recast and all this stuff, but like I fell in love and I was like, yeah. man, maybe I should watch Dawson Creek. 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 Dawson Creek. Maybe I should watch Dawson Creek. Um, I was fucking all about that shit. Um, Katie I Holmes. am a uh, sucker for a montage of new toys. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. when he's going through oh, the yes. gear and then the reveal. Because... One of the things I was most excited about with this movie was the reveal of the suit. Because during the ad campaign, they, it was kind of, he was kind of silhouetted. Mm-hmm. You didn't really get a good feel of like, what's the suit going to look like? And I just dug how it was, oh, this is like military armor. Yeah. And, and it was, it was just so cool when he opened up the cabinet and it's like, there's the full suit that he's been building. No mech survival suit. Mm. So it was just like, ooh, there it is. Oh. So Corey, you while we're watching it today, yes. you're talking about like how does the microwave not boil their blood? Uh it's well, it's focused. Yeah. So to it, a certain distance. It's a focused microwave, but no, it's actually just certain things. 
So the ones that they actually oh, re- in real life is distances. In the military, the one that w- they researched off of was like, like they shoot heat waves. Yeah, and so it's like it can go to anybody, right? And they could just shoot it, and like it penetrates through your clothes, so your clothes don't get hot, but you get hot, <gasps> right? Oh. And so like, it, yeah, it's not, it's not a, a blood, yeah, it's not like all liquid. No. Yeah, because yeah, it's water. I, I was, yeah, and I was, was like, everyone's made of water, but yeah. apparently it's a distance thing, so they're shooting it far underground. So the anyone who's underground near the pipes would get boiled alive. Yeah, it just looked but, like everything was exploding just because like water is routed yeah. through things, and, and it's like yeah, chain yeah. reacting. Oh. But yeah, it's like specific. Um, anything oh. with Crane. I think he's a great villain. Like that oh, scene yeah. with Falcone. He's like, you want to mm. see my mask? So good. I uh, loved that whole scene. The When he goes crazy, I love how Batman looks in oh, his yeah. eyes. Uh, and he's just yeah, like, I'm demon. sorry. Dr. Crane isn't in, in right now. Yeah, he'd like so to leave well. a message to set up yeah. an appointment. <laughs> love it. Kaylin, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but Killian Murphy auditioned to be yeah, Batman. He did. For this really? movie. Yeah. And uh, there's you, you can still see his test auditions in the mask and because they wore uh, Val Kilmer's. Val Kilmer's mask, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh in the in the tests. And they they didn't want him for Batman, but Nolan loved him so much that he cast him as Crane. Wow. Yeah. Like, oh, he's like from across the pond like me. So yeah. about it. Um <laughs> Chris I also love in that not. same kind of scene is uh you almost see the change of Crane because up until this point, he's been kind of, in a way, just kind of like suited, and like uh, you're not being able to see the real yeah, crane composed. yet. The co- he's composed, yeah. And then like when Batman's coming, he's like, "It's the Batman." Bat. You see the so, crane start like, coming out. It's yeah. the, it's the when do the nuts are in the nut house. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you you see the transition of that, and it's yeah. like it's we'll a lot see. of fun. Call the police. Yeah. I uh, love it, Kalen. Um. Uh. I, I think I said a couple, but another thing that I liked, which I feel is probably very intentional is at the end or wait i'm on the right one with yeah the title no no when <laughs> yes. the, the whole place is burned down yeah it's yeah. the right one um and he and rachel are talking and every time it's on him he's like you know very chipper and like oh mm-hmm. we're rebuilding whatever and there's always like a backdrop of all the 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 remaining living plants there of like kind of him moving on to oh, his yeah. next life and then Every time it goes on Rachel, Destruct it's only the, the charred, charred remains of his past and the life he could have had. Right. Mm-hmm. Also foreshadow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. That's, good. that's wow. sad. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it's not wrong. Baby. Burn, yeah. baby, not burn. wrong. But yeah. yeah. No, I, I I really like that because they did it several times with different different things, and mm-hmm. I think that that very aptly communicated They're, their conversation without if they didn't say anything I think I would have understood what was happening Wally Fister is really good at his reverse shot reverse shots mm. he actually knows how to use angles correctly mm. uh, not a lot of people do and I'm just like I don't know why we're doing this anyways Ali uh, mine uh, my favorite scene is probably the Tumblr chase um, on the highway getting Rachel back to safety like it's just just from the moment of him like What's hold that? on Does, like the whole scene of Rachel! him Rachel <laughs> <laughs> well, stay, stay with me. The scene of him uh, test driving the tumbler is also fun, yeah. and then seeing him use it, and it's, it's just bad. Like I had the opposite reaction as you did. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you felt that way still after you finished after you see that. Oh, I, that I scene. still did not like okay. any of the aesthetics. After so the I scene. I loved the new idea for um for the Batmobile and making it more practical. I, I was sold like from minute one, and I loved every bit of it on screen. It was. It was like yeah. I, was a, I was a kid. I was a kid in a candy store. It's a, a kid in a toy store. Tank. In a, in a weird. Yeah, black com- tank. In a weird comparison, my dad loves all the James Bond movies. Hates all the Daniel Craig ones. Oh, because it's realistic. It's grounded in realism. Right. Uh-huh. And what's so no funny gadgets. is that those are inspired by by, well, by the, Batman Begins. Yeah. Because yeah. they were like, wait, this, you can create a hero and make it realistic and groot uh, groot it groot it ground it groot yeah. it. And they were like. And that's what inspired the reboot of James Bond. And which I'm is, not going to tell my dad, who's pushing seventy, to stop being a little bitch. So yeah, I was like, I mean, I'll tell myself that I'll yeah. tell him, <laughs> because he'll kill me. So and um, other than that, I really like his training montage. Do the um, ice fight? The ice oh. fight. Ice fight's so good. You want, um, so you know what the crazy I'm training thing about on that? the poles. The with the ice fight thing. So they were planning on shooting that in February, and they had two weeks to shoot it. Yeah, and then um, they found out like a forecast that like. If they waited another two weeks, I the that. ice would be melted. Melt. Oh, wow. and so uh, people were kind of pissed because they were like, "Yo, what the fuck? We're hearing like sixty mile winds, and like as like it would go on." So the only the actual only shots that they used were actually any of the wide shots that showed the back. The rest, everything is... was just superimposed onto the set. Wow, and it's all green. I didn't know or that. they shot it on a ice rink, but like 
as uh, I think Christian Bale or someone said, it's like, it was fun because we got to be there by ourselves. And as the day got further, he'd be like, crack, crack, crack. <gasps> okay, only five people could be on the ice now. Crack, crack, crack. <laughs> only three people could be on the ice Oh now. my God. Everyone yeah. off the ice. Yeah. yeah. And then like so, the next day they went back and it, it was, was melted. It was just water. <gasps> wow. And then I was like, that's, but then they use those sounds to help build the escape. Oh because that God. builds the tension during yeah. the fight. Yeah. It's like, your father, your parents' death was not your fault. <laughs> Deep like, cracks. Um, any rub scene, your, chest, your arms will warm themselves, which isn't true. I don't which is not. Yeah, he, not Chris Nolan, totally made it up. He went on record. He's like, "You guys don't believe that yeah. shit." Yeah, uh, just a good line. Any scene with Alfred. Yeah, oh. any scene. Oh. I just yeah, when he's crying and driving him when he's like freaking out on the help oh, me, yeah. poison, blood. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Any on the any time I'm on the highway thinking about Alfred saying anything, yeah. just yeah. driving and crying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like God. DD again. <laughs> <laughs> My friends. Yeah. And I mean, it's not like a favorite part, but just something that's like a notable thing is the uh, one thing I really appreciate from all these movies is its ability to to kind of keep both the super serious, like heart heart wrenching, heartwarming stuff in with just incredible levity that's used so well and kind of like keeps you having fun the entire time. Well, which is something that you you don't always get. What will he do next? Well, the, the, right. cool, the cool thing is, like, I think not, all the characters are super capable, mm -hmm. and they're all very witty. Yeah, mm -hmm. no right. one is a damsel in distress. No one's really in danger. Like, danger will happen because of other people's are trajectories. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they can outmaneuver the other person, then they can have their like, "Yeah, bitch, I took that." Versus like, "You're being an idiot, and I'm calling attention to that." Which right. is very. It's, it's to me, it's very Nolan esque. Mm -hmm. Everything's very, it takes itself very seriously. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, they can have co comedic moments, but it's kind of more like, I outmaneuvered you. Didn't yeah. you realize? And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. There, there's a lot of sass in it, which yeah. I, I really yeah. like. And Batman's known for sass, but, you know, this trilogy doesn't really copy that a lot of sassness, but. Yeah. But Bruce Wayne has enough of it, which is cool. And I, I, I love the creation of, like, the Batcave. And yeah. like how they kind of yeah. rooted of like your great grandfather was part of the underground route. Mm. And I was just like, oh, yeah. Of course they would do that. All shit. the all the Waynes are great people, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I I love. I really actually really love the opening or like the the flashback of Baby Bruce Wayne on the train, and he's like, "This is you know that's Wayne Tower, the unofficial center of you know God." Better blah, man. Blah, blah. Better man. Yeah. And he's like, "No, more passionate men who want to run the company." It's like. This is where that, you know, like, it's like, it's it's what the Batman and animated series. And that's when Bruce Wayne got all of his expectations on himself. Well, it's like what Batman, <laughs> uh, it's what, like, the Batman animated series tried to, like, emulate with what Metropolis could have been like. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like, very, like, this is what it could have been, and now this is where we're at. Um, and other than just Chicago. But, <laughs> but it's uh, very just about Chicago. Yeah, it's just Chicago. And, like, that's a good line. That's a good example of, of, of lines and, and story and, like, storytelling methodology that doesn't hold your hand and doesn't treat you like an idiot. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like, yeah, more interested in him. Like, you understand exactly what's happening. Like, he's just, he's rich and he has this company and other people are running and he, cause he's a doctor. He's doing what he likes. Yeah, I mean. And like, you wouldn't address that in, like, a Schumacher movie. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I, we talked a little bit about it in uh, Directors or Us. Check that episode out. Uh, but uh, Christopher Nolan gets away with a lot of like exposition talk. He yeah. does just by Big time. because his exposition is not like lowbrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very like high end conversational, cerebral conversations of like, yeah. this is what the structures are. Yeah, um, I'm it, giving you information right now. Yeah, and I really like and I almost pointed. I forget what conversation it was where I was like. I was just a bunch of exposition for the sake of exposition there, but I didn't feel I didn't realize it until the conversation had ended. Well, the like, acting was so good. I learned so much. <laughs> the, acting, <laughs> the, the acting was so well, good. Like the microwave emitter. Yeah, exactly. Like one oh, ME's yeah. gone. Yeah, one ME. Damn it. Yep. Like you know what I mean? As opposed to like, let me explain to you what this. When I guess maybe. Well, it's like, like yeah, maybe it's a, he's a CEO. He doesn't care about necessarily the specifics of things. So I can buy. I can, I can buy why it was. Yeah. Presented that way. So. Um, I really liked. Uh, in this film specifically, the the main theme is fear, yeah. And the main mm -hmm. theme about fear uh, and the different ways, and it talks about it, how it's seen, how it's discussed, uh, even how you face it, how you deal with it, yeah. Um, how you manage through it, and uh, Batman goes through immersion therapy, and he immerses himself with it, but also owns it. Um, there, I was watching a lot of the the uh, so pre pre in pre preparation for this anniversary event, I watched 
all the Schumacher and all the Burton films. Wow. Nice. And then I watched all of the uh, behind the scenes uh, extra bull craps for the trilogy for okay. this one, but none of the none of the actual movies none until of, today. Yeah. Because I was like, Solid. I want to get all the wanna, auxiliary information. And then just get it all the way And then there. get it in there. For some context, we just watched all three movies all yeah, before ones. setting down to record uh, this. But one thing I really liked was that they got this, they got a bunch of researchers and everything they did was like try to be based in like a military, like all the equipment they have. It's like, yeah, this is what you Nomex. Know, it's like fire per- retardant suits. Like this is mm-hmm. what firefighters that they use. Like this is a da 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 da. Um, but specifically, uh, Insane, uh, I love this inclusion and how they were very... Um, very careful with it. Insane is not a medical term. Insane is a legal term. Legal term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Um, you, yeah, you never hear that at all used clinically. Yeah. And so I was like, that's kind of cool. And so you only hear that. And like, they really kind of try to make You only it, hear it from a legal perspective mm-hmm. and not a... And they really, yeah, yeah, they really try to show those differences. Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't. Yeah. Anytime Crane talks about their issues, it's this always very specific. Where... Always paranoid schizophrenia or uh-huh. stuff like that. Very specific uh, issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really like, again, like Bruce, don't be, don't be scared. And then, you know, Ducard, AKA Rosal Gould saying like, you are afraid, but just not of me. Yeah. And it's just like dealing with that and like overcoming it and then turning that fear into your weapon. It's yeah. Like, mm. I also loved, uh, mm-hmm. the moments where Bruce puts on the Bruce face. So like getting everyone out of the party. Oh, and immediately oh, slipping into the drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Slipping into the drunk. Playboy. The, yeah, like I'm buying this hotel and I'm setting new rules. Like that kind of shit. Clearly mm-hmm. a guy who dresses up as a bat. Yeah, like I love, I he does it throughout all three films. Mostly, obviously, the first two. Uh, but it's always such a wonderful switch to see it happen. Because you can see it on his face. Like, yeah. Without him saying a word, you're like, oh, he's he's being quote unquote Bruce Wayne right now. Yeah. Uh, but my yeah, my favorite one is the you know, Roz being like, go ahead, try to explain to everyone the situation. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm without just losing a beat, without, without a losing a beat, the next word out of my, he around. is drunk. Yeah. Drunk he just Bruce. like does that, that blink and you're like, oh, okay. He's, he's playing a drunk yeah. Bruce Wayne now. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Seriously. Cause it's like, get out. He, he plays, <laughs> don't laugh. you know, he's Batman, he's Bruce Wayne, but he's also like the third, like the second Bruce Wayne where yeah. it's like, he's the Bruce Wayne at home. Right. By mm-hmm. himself in the naked moments where you see who he really is. The Bruce yeah. Wayne that kind of like, look over here. Mm-hmm. This is, don't look at what I this other activity yeah. that I'm doing, mm-hmm. but I think it also. Well, I think the whole movie is pointing is pointing out that those moments when he is by himself and in his own company, yeah, or just is, with Alfred, well, he's Batman. The, like, that's, the, yeah. that's his. That I mean, Katie Holmes kind of spills it out for us at the end. But well, it's a conversation. We remember, that. we had the conversation with Kevin Conroy where we all discussed the idea that Batman's not the mask. Bruce Wayne. Is. Bruce, Bruce Wayne's Wayne is the mask. The mask. Yeah. And this this film, I think. I feel like did a really great yeah. uh, establishing that and like uh-huh. I've I've mentioned on the podcast before, uh, but if you haven't heard it, one of my favorite panels I've ever seen is uh, Wonder Woman with her rope, getting everyone to tell the truth oh. about who they are. And Batman and Superman both grab it, and Superman says Kal El, and Batman says Batman. I'm Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's because that's who yeah. he sees himself as he truly is. And then they have the moment in Batman Beyond as well. He's yep. like, my mind was calling me Bruce. What's mm-hmm. wrong with that? I don't refer I to don't myself, call myself as Bruce. Bruce. The oh, funny thing yeah. is, though, is like Christopher Nolan has gone on record in an interview saying, like, this is the Bruce Wayne story. Yeah. And so, I mean, like, mm-hmm. I mean, in the mythology and lore of what Batman is, like, I do agree with Kevin Conroy that Christian Bale's character, is, I think, is probably the most defined and, you know, renowned version of Batman and Bruce Wayne's story. But, like, to me, it's it's still Bruce Wayne. Of it's course. Bruce yeah. Wayne, of course. And it's Bruce Wayne how he deals in consequence of, like, having a dual life. Yeah. Um, but that Bruce yeah. Wayne is Batman. Mm-hmm. Is that's those are the morals he believes. Mm-hmm. The yeah, true yeah, yeah, Bruce yeah. Wayne believes in. The but Bruce we're, Wayne yeah. we're ever, seeing as a Bruce Wayne right. story. Yes. Favorite uh, characters. Favorite character. Yeah. I'll go first because I know right off the bat, Alfred is my favorite character. Oh. I just I dug him yeah, mm-hmm. in this in this one of the the uh, I can speak trilogy. Um, yeah, and any scene that he was in his quick retorts with Bruce, I was just like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's that's the guy. I have fun by accident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's mine. Uh, mine is the girl on his right arm. Jesus. No. No. What? Get, get out. Wow. Just leave. The one that says hotel is to buy. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, for me, it's it's Lieutenant Gordon. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Sergeant. I, I mean, is it is he sergeant? He's sergeant until the end. Okay. Tell him is like um, I know. Then it's lieutenant. Yeah. And then it's and lieutenant. lieutenant, and then he gets Come. his unfortunate promotion. Sure. Uh, oh. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, Later. So yeah, he. I mean, Gary Oldman, incredible actor, God, he's like so incredible range. He just melts into whatever role he's playing. You don't even recognize the actor anymore. 
Um, when he's flipping his I, wand. I, and I actually yes. no, kept thinking, like, is that Gary Oldman? That's not Gary right. Oldman. Is that Gary Oldman? Is that Gary Oldman? Yes. No, it's, yeah, that's, oh, Gary, that's Oldman. Gary Oldman being uh, that's what Sirius I would Black. consider, yeah. like, the perfect on-screen representation of Gordon. The, the funny thing, Christopher Nolan was, like, saying, like, at the time, like, you know, before, this was before the Harry Potters. Mm-hmm. And, like, it was, like, well, it was in the midst. It was in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, yeah. like, he hadn't had, Gary Oldman hasn't had a, a history of playing, like, a wholesome, hearty No, character. he's usually a bad guy. He's usually a bad guy. And so they're, yeah. like, but if you looked at Frank Miller's comic book, they're, like, he is how Gordon should look like. Yeah. Dr. Smith is good at heart. <laughs> No. Anyway. Forgot he was in Lost in Space, didn't you? Yeah. I know you did. Go watch it. <laughs> it still doesn't really hold up, but it's a fun one. Go watch still it for, a bad guy. Go watch it for Joe. Still a bad guy. Matt LeBlanc, period. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, go, wa- go watch it for Joey. <laughs> go watch it for Joey. <laughs> Caitlin. I was going to say Tom, because uh, I need nope, a I minute more for my He's brain. my favorite character, too. Oh, really? Tom. <laughs> Tom watching the movie. If you can was peel yourself away from the mirror. Of course, you just said, I was going to say Tom. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Well, who's your favorite character? Uh, mm, that's, I was trying Joffrey. to deflect to you because uh, I, I wanted another moment from my brain. Um, before I say my favorite character, I did want to give a little shout out to the um, background people. Yeah. Because um, like the initial when he's, uh, ju- like when Batman's coming in on that shipment at the docks. Yeah. Like the guys with the guns looked genuinely terrified. That oh, whole yeah. scene shot like a horror movie is great. Mm-hmm. Right. Where are you? And yeah, and I'm like, I've seen enough movies where like the goons are the just people and yeah. who stood there and were like, ah, <laughs> and it's what? so upsetting. But they're they're like the last guy who's stuck there yeah. with the gun and like freaking the fuck out. Oh, Tom Wilkinson. I don't. The main guy in the car. Yeah. No, 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 no. 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 The one right he was the last him. goon oh, okay. that oh. he was taking out. But that guy looked like legit scared out of his mind. The where are you guy? Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. Right here. Oh, yeah. yeah, just here. Like, all, just shout out because they were good. Yeah. Nice. Um, that was a great scene. For favorite character, are one of my ex- favorite moments in the trailer. For favorite character, are we excluding yeah. Batman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because okay. yeah, Batman is the best character. No, no, no I, got, I got it then. I got it then. Uh, uh, you want me to go then, Kaylin? Get by yeah, you, you go. Buy me time. Carmine Falcone, baby. Falcone? Falcone. Falcone? Because he's like, the walls are closing in. Well, also, it's like, Fear. And he's just like talking about it. He's kind of pontificating about like how, you know, good Bruce, word. Yeah, I know. It's like a $2 nice. word. Uh, it was on my calendar today. Maybe nice. 250 actually. 250 <laughs> Dictionary word of the day. Um, it was uh, like, I just like how he really kind of puts a fire under his butt, being like, you're the, you're the prince of Gotham. You have to go a thousand miles before anyone knows your name. And it's like, good idea. And it's like, he says, like, you don't know fear. You don't know desperation. Like, you, you, like, I have no trouble with like pulling this gun and shooting you in front of all these people and it's like oh fuck yeah but also like Tom Wilkinson's fucking great yeah he is. yeah he, he, um, he really is and I've, I've he never seen Rock role. and Roll though he's fucking phenomenal yeah but then I feel like I don't know if he, I feel like he's definitely been an actor with us for a while but oh, yeah. like, I oh, feel yeah. like I slept on him bef- until Batman Begins oh. and then I started watching all his stuff because every time I see him I'm like oh I gotta watch this dude yeah and plus he's got a great first well name. he you believe hmm. it's like Tom he's not in is it your, for... he really was your favorite character Tom yeah I, I really <laughs> Tom. Aww, worked um, out after all but also there's a really good history with Carmine Falcone in the comic books and like this plays a really nice way and like I like how None of his suits are dark. Yeah. All his suits are light because mm. he's kind of like he's good. He doesn't you care. believe him. As, well, no, because he's that he, he's that dirty off white, right? And he's yeah. kind of like eggshell. I'm too clean. I'm too good. But also, like you're never gonna touch me. And it's like, oh, oh this is it's the bullshit. Because like that's what Batman is. Like mm-hmm. he's fully in the dark. He looks like a bad guy. He acts like a bad guy. He yeah. breaks the law, but he does it for just reasons. Yeah. Carmen Falcone, no one can touch him, and he probably does a lot of shit, quote unquote, legally. Hmm. It's just that he does it for dubious reasons. Yeah. 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 Money's not as interesting to me as Favis. Yeah. I, like, you believe you believe that he is in the position that he is in. Like, right. you buy it. You buy yeah. the character. <laughs> I, lo- I just love how sure he is that Crane's going to get him out of there in yeah. that moment. Oh, Doc, the voices. The walls are closing in. Blah, blah, blah. Come like, one oh, day of this food and so it'll be true. Fucked. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea. Uh, for me, it's Gordon and Crane. Uh, every time they're on screen. I can't keep my eyes off them. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Crane's ending of just getting... Uh, yeah. Tase in the face. Tase in the face. <laughs> face. It's just like, a, oh, that's a bummer. Uh, Is that his new villain name? Taser no. face? Uh, no, because mm. he's in, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians 2. Too. Uh, but, uh, the best I, 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 like movie you said, old. Gordon, like Gary Oldman is just like, he he's almost everything Batman wants to be. 
Like he's the Gordon? good guy. Yeah, like mm-hmm. he really is. He's the good guy. Who, he's good guy, Gordon. He wants to do everything right. Like yeah. I, I gotta trust who I gotta trust, kind of thing, and uh, believes Batman is for a greater good and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, Crane, like I love that switch. I, I'm, I'm all for people who can toss a switch, like in, uh, you know, uh, Far From Home and stuff like that. Like I just love moments where villains can switch. You're like, oh shit, that's happening now. Cool, that's awesome. So that moment in the in the jail cell with Falcone, also, or or when he takes off his mask and he's like, "It's the Batman." I also, you're like, "This is really you." I like how he bails out fucking Victor Zaz. Yeah, and Victor Zaz for Jesus. everyone at home that's not familiar with it. Um, he's a character in the video games. Uh, the Arkham he's games. the one when he leaves, he's got like the scars. Scars, and on so his each neck and stuff. cut, oh, and yeah, each yeah, yeah. tally mark is a person he's killed, oh. and, and he's he cuts got his it himself. Whole body. But the thing he's always like, his 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 like shtick is always like, "I got a place for you." It's yeah. like, I'll find a place for you. And he's got oh. scars all over his body. He's got a special place for Batman. Yeah. That's he's a, always been saving. Cool. Uh, so it is in, a, is a it in his crotch? It's in his butthole. It's where uh, <laughs> no. he puts wow. his Jack Skeleton tongue. All right, the, all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so think, my favorite character. If I recall, it's the fifth mark across his forehead. Is Maybe. Saved for Batman. Wow. Oh, great. To, to carry out the tally. From the video games? The Arkham games? Yeah. Oh. yeah. He's the first guy I you haven't fight. gotten in, way yeah. into that In the that first yet. Batman uh, Arkham, Arkham Asylum. Uh, Arkham Asylum. You, he's the first boss. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, uh, so yeah, the, the two of them I would say are, are my favorite characters. I didn't know he could choose two, so mine is going to well, be you, I Gordon. Just, it was even. I know. Also, I was, fair. Like, he couldn't decide. So yeah. it would be one. It, How crappy is it? What were you going to say? Sorry. Fuck. It's not I crappy was, at all. I, I keep... Leaning towards, is it Raz or Raze or Raze? Okay, so the Hebrew, Raze. the, re, the Hebrew is uh, Raz. Raz. The Raz Arabic Abul? is Raish. Raish. So um, both are correct. So technically, both are correct, depaining which when which dialect you want to go. With. I always Jesus. said Raish. Raish uh, because that's from the animated series. Kevin Conroy calls it as Raish, oh. but in this film, a lot of people know him as Raz. Oh, yeah. okay. And I think even in the Arkham games, they call him Raish. Huh. Um, because Kevin Conroy voices him. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, so whatever you want to choose. Uh, Ray Shal Ghul. Okay. There you go. Yeah. He, uh, he yeah. was Slash Ducard. Yeah, Slash Ducard. He was his first name? Huh? Hen- Henry. Henry Ducard. Henry, Henry Ducard. Ducard. Of course, it's Henry. <laughs> nice. Raish. Raish is way cooler. I think Raish is his real name, though, right? Henry Ducard is a... Yeah, Ra- oh, yeah. Henry Ra- 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 is a totally fake, fake yeah. name. So when I was a kid, I, or when I was young when I first watched it, I thought it was a mantle. Oh. I oh. thought the head of the... Because de- Ra- 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 means head of the demon. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, and the creator for that blah, blah blah found it from Arabic terms, and he's like head of demon. And I thought he's like, oh, he's the new head of the demon. So the other one is Talia and, of the demon. And then so I, I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, and uh, it probably means claw of the demon or some shit. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, or probably talons, talons of the demon. Talons, maybe. Uh, but like, uh, I was like, oh, so maybe that bald guy that's weird dressed up, it will be the new head of the demon. And then I never got the fact that like it was a switcheroo. Yeah. Oh. For like you the didn't longest time, he was a time. double. That he was like a he was playing the fall guy. Game. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, why is he dressed so cool though? <laughs> that guy's a fall guy. I'm the brains of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I really, I, I really liked him for um, being the mentor and All having his, like, that super wise. Yeah, things he tells him. Yeah, and and even the moment where he like leaves him to die, essentially thinking that he's gonna die, he's like. Has that little it's moment fair. of like, it's fair now. <laughs> you did this to me, I'll do the same to you. And he's just like, I'm not wearing hockey pants. Oh, oh my God. You had to. You I had, had to. to you guys. Had to. I have no choice yeah. in these. Uh, yeah. I don't want to. What's your legally legally right. you're legally sure, sure, sure. almost there. Kalen, since this is your like first ish time really watching it, what was your favorite line from him or favorite part from him? From Raish? That's a hard question. My favorite. Tell me. Is when he's talking about he once had a love. And how oh. the, the pain of losing her was like poison in his veins. I was like, <laughs> uh, I like that line uh, where he tells him that your arms will take care of themselves. <laughs> the fake line. The yeah. fake yeah. You yeah. haven't beaten me. But also, training is nothing. Will is everything. And then fucking just knocks his ass out. Oh, so yeah. fucking good. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, I think badass. I just liked the 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 concepts. He was instilling in him, but you never the, learn to be aware of your surroundings. How, how it like warped him too far. Like I liked he's a lot. E- of, he was on the same track, but then just derailed. He's an ecological terrorist. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he he's he's Thanos, but on a, on a world level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. 
Real, on a real smaller world. scale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Technically. On an Earth level. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. That's I like strange Thanos. that the world level Uh-oh. is a smaller scale. <laughs> right. Yeah, but Thanos, but on just, just the one world. Just, just, just the smaller one scale. Just the one. <laughs> just the one world. Uh, Minuscule in comparison, really. Yeah. <laughs> Teeny tiny. Yep, that's uh, that's me. Cool. Now go to qualms. 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 Uh, I don't really... I mean, mine would just be explain the, the microwave a little more because like honestly until this last time that I looked it up I always thought I was like why doesn't everyone around it just boil if it focuses on water right if they I don't know one line Mm -hmm. but it doesn't really take away at all Um, I have like I said I have used to be qualms Um, the the tumbler when I first saw it they bothered me when I first watched it yeah I was like the the tumbler the 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 batmobile quote um, I just I went into it with such high expectations, but as the years have gone by and I've watched them so many times, I'm like, that is dope. <laughs> well, especially <laughs> since say uh, um, a certain scene in Dark Knight, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Made also, you more excited for Ali. Yeah, you made the jo- you made the comment about it. it's like uh, rampless jumps. Ramp- yeah, he's like it'll, it'll boost you into a rampless jump, and I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> um, <laughs> a rampless jump? You're just gonna hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it does. It's it's like it a does. Bunny. It's, the, the thing is designed to Whoop. it's a bridging vehicle, so it's designed to like go over a chasm without needing a ramp. So yeah. so they actually have those in the military right now. Oh, that was right awesome. Now. Well, they, they have them in the military. Did Batman inspire it? Tell no, me it did. No, the, me, everything they told me. Lie to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the way that the actual mechanics work, it, it could do rampless jumps, but it has to be on lower levels. Oh. So you can go from like the 13th story to the 12th, but you oh, can't I go see. higher or else you would need to have an angle. And that's, this, what they, though. <laughs> and that's what they mean because if you had a normal car, it would just go straight down. And this oh. you can jump from a rooftop to a freeway. Yeah. So you're good. Or a yeah. rooftop to a rooftop. Because it's or an angle. to a rooftop. Because it's an angle when yeah. it's on the free, on the roof. Yeah. That's true, yeah. It is. Um, like, I, I I watched all the fucking special features, and I was like, all right, let me see you try to logic band-aid yeah, this it, shit. Yeah, it never, like... Let me see the like, midi-chlorians of this shit. Uh, it never took off, like, a rocket ship. I knew that would have been silly, but, yeah, yeah it's still I would have cool. loved that. Well, because, like, but <laughs> jumping in movies, like, jumping cars in movies doesn't work, or in jumping in general doesn't, move the, doesn't work the way you think it does, like... You just immediately yeah. go down, yeah. <laughs> like pretty it's much. It's like cars like are really heavy. There's a bit heavy. of an arc, but you're not going to really give it to this. The only a, one that I think would have actually worked Dude. correctly is probably like the Tim Burton Batmobile because it's like a rocket. It yeah. actually was made, actually because, made to be a rocket. But like uh, Christopher Nolan designed it just out of putty and it was like literally a block. <laughs> and then Nathan Crowley, who is the product, uh, production designer, was like, oh yeah, I know what you're doing. I was like, what the fuck? The <laughs> test footage of them driving that thing is fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it, by the way, that is a fully functioning vehicle. I want to yeah. drive it. It has like uh, a Chevy they, engine in it or something. Yeah, they had they all the vehicles for all the Batman with a fucking test. Same with the Batpod. Are, pod. are yeah. they, yeah. can we find them? And I don't know. You drive them? Yeah, maybe? we probably could. Probably probably the motorcycle them. in the second one, the motorcycle, same. Anyways, these are qualms. Where are qualms? <laughs> right, uh, sorry, sorry. I have no qualms. You see how hard it is? Uh, um, I don't know. We pull. I'll just go skip all any. those bloody push ups. I don't know. I'm just starting to say things now. Um, I have I have a qualm. I can kind of get us going. Wow. Is it um, that you don't have qualms? And it's really only in, be- in like, I'm not even sure if it's a qualm, but it's more of a thing I noticed. And it did start to kind of stick out a lot. And I feel like the movie, especially in the third act, is a little too orange. Oh, what? I feel like visually? Visually. Just the, oh. um, there's oh. like a weird tint. Sorry, like I thought you were doing tint. a weird director thing where it's like the emotions were very orange. No. You, I wanted it to be more purple. Um, I just, I just noticed a bit more of that, um, they, I think they were kind of going for maybe a sickly look for the Narrows or something, but it was just a little, especially in the third act, you could definitely notice it a lot more. Just a little more I orange. I think it was mostly supposed to be the orange city light, like the old yeah, the street old lamps street light. dispersed underneath the fog. So okay. it just like disperses the light more. Yeah. Mm. As opposed to it being just like focused street lights. So like yeah. another movie that does that is Collateral. A lot mm. of it's really yellow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the LA Those lights, are like the LA before lights, they yeah. replaced a lot of them with LEDs, which yeah. they've done now. It just didn't always come off that way. I felt like the whole thing just got mm. an orange mm. tint on it. But gotcha. it was just a little small and only really, it only set out because of um, the Dark Knight like doesn't have that. Right. Well, the Dark Knight's more blue. It, yeah, they, more blue, the, the three colors more are natural orange, blue colors. And white. white and black. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so that, that was the only thing that I was like, oh, compared to the other two, it just feels like maybe like, like a couple ticks overbearing, but nothing really. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to try to uh, I get that, shit on what your qualm is, but I love it because of that. No, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because For I was sure. just like, it's such a it's such a char- it's such a character of the scene. Yeah, it's very yeah. comic, book. but for me to well, like, it's just like too. thematic. But it, I mean, yeah. it always reminded me of like a comic book. Like you have huge splash pages that it's all. Well, that it, color. it looks like a Gotham yeah. in Batman the animated series evening. Yeah, your qualm is that you noticed it. Yeah, right. That that I noticed it. That right, like, right, right. Stuff like that belongs, but it was just yeah. like, like the fact that I had to like 
Get, just take it down take from the 11 movie would be great. To 10. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I get you. I, I feel it. you. I don't have any. Mine, mine was just that there was so much information. I almost wish, having just seen all three of them, I almost wish there had been another film. Just oh. because there we was all wish so there was much, one more film. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but, but there was just every movie, and this is kind of an overarching thing, so I apologize for skipping ahead a little bit. But there's so much information. I wish there was something in between one and two. You know what there is? A movie between the two. There is there? It's an animated movie. Yeah. What? It's an animated, an animated movie, movie based in that one world, and, and Kevin Conroy voices the Batman. Well, I think I know, I think I know the sentiment that Caitlin's trying to drive forward. I think you mean just the amount of information yes. that is presented. Yeah, I, I felt a little not overwhelmed because I processed everything. But it was just so much. I felt like even even when the movie was done, I just I started writing out everything I could possibly think of, but it it was just so much happening all at once. Uh, again, it wasn't overwhelming. It's mm-hmm. I don't want to say that it was overwhelming. Can I venture an analysis? Yes, please. Um, Save my brain. I think one of it is, and this is a, and luckily, well, we're still getting this in movies. Still, even the last Batman movie or Batman Enough movie had this, which is like, I feel like one danger could be that you're trying to hit all these notes for presenting a Batman yeah. universe, like parents' death, Alfred is a thing, Wayne Enterprises, what's that doing? So I feel like a filmmaker is burdened with all of that. Right. And if you do too much of it, is that, it's, a, it's just more of a topic to bring up, but like, is that something that can hinder storytelling if you're burdened with jam, jamming the universe with everything it needs? Uh, Not that this movie is guilty of that, but it's just an interesting, this, this was what I took from like, some ideas for what you're I, saying. I, would, but like, I was like, it's an interesting to, thing. To discuss like, a little bit further with that, I would say that's the challenge. It's not yeah, a burden. It's right. the challenge because you do, it does conform to a three act structure. And I think the thing is with Batman specifically, like mind you, mind everyone that's listening, this was the first time that they were going to tell the Batman's origin. They had never done it on yeah. live, live screen. Hmm. Right. And so this Showing is the first time of like, this is the first time he puts on They the did suit. flashbacks only. Yeah. And so this is the first time Batman. he decides to be Batman. First time like you see the death yeah. happen in real time, like quote unquote real you can argue time that in front they're, of the child. You could argue that they're flashbacks because they happen when they're, it's- I call it two it's, timelines. When it, yeah, yeah. It's the Nolan-esque story the time. other flashbacks, he was already, he's already been Batman for some time. Right. Yeah, like he's thinking back at it. It's Val Kimmer looking at the stupid book of the Death Legend. Or Michael mm-hmm. Keaton, who's been Batman for Well, a like while. for instance, uh, Ducard is like, why didn't you take vengeance? What's stopping you from taking vengeance? And then it, it's kind of a flashback if you think about it because it goes yeah. back and tells that story of why he can't get vengeance. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not consistent. It's like a couple times, but yeah. Basically. Yeah, there's, yeah, like I said, there's two timelines. Yeah. Before Tibet and then after Tibet. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe the going back and showing why he couldn't get vengeance could have been spooshed a little more possibly i think so, uh, okay. that scene the cool thing about that scene i think the way that nolan does it it serves is to show who how does rachel look like now and what's happened to wayne manor at this time and then how does he decide because that all happens in the one scene right or the one flashback of like he goes back home he goes to the trial he tries to kill doesn't kill rachel gets mad slaps him goes to falcone then leaves it's all in that one like why don't you avenge your blah blah, blah. Yeah. yeah and again it's he gives the guy's coat yeah. <laughs> it's not that I dislike it. It was just a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I just want another I want another oh, yeah. live action movie from that. And I'm what's the name of that animated movie? I have between? it with me. Gotham Knight. I'll let you borrow. Gotham Knight. Yeah. Still gonna write it down for myself. Okay. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, I, I think that's my only qualm is I wish there was more. So Good no qualm more qualms. Go to no. rating. Rating. Four point eight. Rating. Wow. Okay. Corey wrote four point eight. Were you first on the list to go? We're uh, all. We're everyone all except list. Caitlin is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for trusting me, Josh. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm a four point nine. Oh. I am also a four point nine. Oh. Four point nine. Sorry. I'm a five. Tom's a five. I'm not shocked. Caitlin, what are you? Four point eight. Ooh, oh, look at that. So Tom and Josh and the patrons were right. Because Corey yep. and Caitlin are tied for yeah, the yeah. grump. That was the quickest fucking grump like yeah, right? we've ever had. <laughs> no we have up to at speak all. Here's it. the thing. <laughs> we go into planning our two-year on purpose, and we're picking things that we're like, we really like. That's the thing. Yeah, disclaimer for these like anniversary episodes. They're going to be movies that we like. 
Yeah. Unless you're Tommy Uray, <laughs> the fellowship at a 4.9, then everyone gets mad at you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. correct. Never going to live that down. No, <laughs> no Josh, just wait until one day you do it, and then I'll be like, all right, Josh, you remember that one time? Yep. Uh, but yeah, I'm fine for me. I'm not going to change it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I fucking love this movie. I Yeah, mm. I think this... The way Nolan tells the story, it's like you get the childhood, you get the inciting action to what sparks him on his journey, and then you get him actually doing the thing versus like, I imagine this being jam-packed into two weeks. I can't let this go. Yeah. <gasps> no, oh. because I'm thinking of my rating. Yeah. I can't let this go because it's hurting me. Because okay. he doesn't want to be the... Uh, he doesn't want no, me to no, be no, the... No, 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 no. I'm... Uh-oh. I would not change a single thing about this movie. So it's a five. Oh. So it's a five. Yeah, so he doesn't want me to be the lonely five. Gosh. <laughs> There's what? two fives today. You know what? You're, oh, a, you're, shit. A, you're a nerd. Oh. <laughs> Good. You enjoy things like um, Batman. Uh, so, so excuse so me, you're in a 4.8. <laughs> then it's 4.8 for me and you're Kaylin. 4.9 for Ollie and fives for Josh and Tom. Yep, uh, that sounds right. Rating. Kaylin, yeah. also, uh, the entire village that was on the side of the mountain yes, tell was me about built it. all by them. Oh. <gasps> Uh, the entire the entire Narrows was built by them. They took an airplane. They took a giant air hangar in Glasgow and then built a city inside of yeah. it. Yeah. What? And so I was like, okay, this is. I, when I realized, like, oh, hardly any of this is shot on location. Nope. Then it's I was like, this sucks. Stage. I was wow. like, not mad about it, but I was like, they modeled, it, they modeled it off of you know Chicago and New York and uh, I think Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then the next like, film Jesus. had more was, No, they were like, yeah. Yeah. only shooting it. I could actually kind of tell the village was a constructed But it, kinda, it, like, it felt like this but weird not, not side a, village. Yeah, crap. yeah, yeah. yeah. On the side back, of the mountain, just beneath that was the like giant that, League of Shadows yeah. mansion thing. Well, th- that's one of the things, the way the city is presented. That's the like 5% fantasy dial being turned on. Yeah. You know? Right, right, that, right. That's kind of how I see it. Yeah, that's why I was like. And then also, the next movie is sh- like straight up Chicago. Oh, well, yeah. yes. the, the yeah. overhead shot when they're going back to New- to Gotham is all CGI. Huh. The entire oh. flyover shot oh, yeah. they built. That's like they built a Gotham. Yeah, but I want to say built. I really love the story of that little blue flower. Yeah, I feel like that little blue flower is could could be its own little character. <laughs> I would draw a face on it. He has his own little journey. Makes it I'm all the way to flower. Gotham. <laughs> don't eat stage. Don't eat me. You panic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't breathe me. You next time on Batman. Don't ingest me at all. You oh, panic. the little blue flower that could. That that did. <laughs> and Lucy. That did and almost destroyed the city Aww. and killed so many people. Yeah. Sorry about that. Wow. Uh, anyway, well, we did it, y'all. We did <laughs> it. Complete. Batman I begins. Broke a blink. No other gushing. We're all good. I mean, I. We spend a lot of time on gushing, okay, no, but I can yeah. always do more. Uh, I can always... We do the next one. I mean, our gushing will carry on into the other movies, too. I could always talk about how I love the design of the suit and the felt-like cape and how much gliding we get in this. It oh. makes me very happy. One of my favorite details... When he's gliding over everyone panicking and his face is like yeah. uh, a demon glowing. One love of my it. favorite small details is just him having his gauntlets from his like ninja outfit. Oh yeah! Oh my god! And, like, I forgot all about you know the, the hallucinations. Moment, the Those moment were that also good. the guy is hallucinating of Batman and he's like just all black, he reminded me of the bad guy, the main main bad guy in the mask. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, mm-hmm. Dorian. Dorian? Dorian, like yeah. when he has the mask, like. Oh, yeah. His face is so... Go back and look at it, Ollie. His face so jaggedy. Yeah. And, like, the lips. Yeah. Especially when Crane like, is looking at him. Yeah. 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 And he's it's got, like, the, black the and stuff goo, going on in his like, mouth. Lips are goozing. Uh, and when, when Rachel is hallucinating things, he's got, like, maggots crawling out. Yeah. But then when Bruce is, it's bats, bats. coming out of his mouth. Yeah. Uh, I actually really so like... So don't like bugs. Uh, finding out that the way that the designers desi- designed the cape was because they needed to figure out how to make the cape. And then they're like, "What? What does the military do?" And then they found like, "Oh, they use memory foam." <gasps> and then they or memory fabric. And then like, and then they just threw that into the movie. Oh, like, dude, the, when they're first smart. showing his him like practicing claw. his, his oh. little claw thingy, mm-hmm. so cool. Yeah. Also, so cool. Problem with the graphite, so I was like, "Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. just the whole like real like how how would you in this current real world get all these materials together, order all the yeah. parts you need via like, Oh, when they when it, it shatters, oh. when it shatters, and they have to yeah. order them all over again. Like ten thousand more 10, to avoid Glad suspicion. We got a discount. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? They probably sold all the previous nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine to some Halloween spirit store well, all across <laughs> America. The so they the sold out movie. immediately, yeah. got their money back. Um, um, well, brilliant. we did it. I think we did mean, it. We we begun yeah. it. We have we've started it. it. We've, we've begun the best. Stick begins. around, y'all. We, yeah, don't is, go anywhere. Thank you for listening to part one of our three-part two-year anniversary, the Dark Knight trilogy. So exciting. 
Swear to me! <laughs> if this is the first time you're listening to Nerd On, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate you. Um, share us with your friends, your family, and share it with uh, Crane. He's an enemy, right? He's, yeah. yeah. He might not like it, but what if he does? Oh, that'd be then great. Then he'll come for us. Oh, God. Not as no, good. Not not Batman, as good. Wouldn't, Batman wouldn't like that. Anyway. Batman wouldn't like that. <laughs> uh, you can check out uh, <laughs> information about us at nerdon.tv. It has all of the information about our other shows. Uh, Where are the other shows going? <laughs> <laughs> They're on nerdon.tv. Oh, okay. uh, Why? <laughs> the Cables Crusaders, uh, Trope Time. They are our other shows. We also have the Nerdon Update, our other weekly show. Lots going on, but check out nerdon.tv. Do stop by uh, iTunes and rate and review us. It does help. A lot. A lot. But yeah, we are going to end part one here. Mm -hmm. You know the drill. As always, Nerd On! Ending Broadcast.